Let me ask you guys something. What is your criteria for underrated coach in college football? Like, is it production that doesn't get brought up enough? Is it conference championships that we just kind of throw to the wayside? Is it consistent winning seasons? What actually is determining an underrated coach? And do you have your underrated coach in college football? I think there are a ton of good options out there, but I do have one that actually stands taller than most. And I figure today... Let's go ahead and discuss who it is. But if you are new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, and I'm going to keep you entertained throughout the college football offseason and well past that too. Recap in 2023, a look ahead to 2024, dumb predictions, and even questions from you, the listeners. So if this is your daily dose of college football, you need to survive the offseason. Might I recommend that you smash that subscribe button down below, leave a comment telling me your underrated coach in college football going into 2024, tell your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, college football aficionados, and really just anybody that wants to have a debate about this subject, about this channel because we are on the race to become the number one YouTube show talking college football daily, and I got a little secret for you. We're going to get there, so jump on in while the water's fine. Follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. That way, conversations surrounding our favorite sport never have to stop flowing. Every few years, we'll see coaches kind of make their case about why they're underrated. They do something miraculous, or a program is better off in the hands of their situation, or they recruit like no one's business, and we just kind of go and say, okay, you're doing a lot of good. You're underrated. We don't mention you alongside the Nick Sabans of the world, or we don't mention you alongside the Dabo Sweeney's or the Kirby Smarts because you're underrated. Well, to me, the term when it comes to underrated is you've been doing this at a exceedingly dominant level for a consistent amount of time, and we always are never putting you in the same conversation as the rest. And you know who does that better than most? Kyle Whittingham. Kyle Whittingham, if you were to ask anybody from, I would say, 2007 to 2018, 2019, one of the most underappreciated coaches in college football. And to me, at this very moment, he still is. The difference is now he's starting to gain a little bit of that traction. You know, 10-win seasons, 11-win campaigns, conference championships, Pac-12 title odds. He's been doing it before. Now he's doing it at the same regular. You're seeing first round picks come out of Utah. Salt Lake City is rocking and rolling on Saturdays. And so the feeling is, yes, no longer underrated, properly rated. Some would say underrated in terms of, oh, he's a top 12 coach. Nay, nay, he's top 10. But he's been consistent everywhere along the pathway. He has done this at an average, I mean, slightly above average to almost elite level. And we never brought him up alongside Saban, alongside Les Miles, alongside Urban Meyer. He just was kind of there. Took over for a program, was there. Well, another coach has done the exact same thing and has done it to a T and doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. And he's the most underrated coach in college football. It's Chris Kleiman at Kansas State. There's no other way to put it. Chris Kleiman, on two different occasions, had to take over for legacy coaches. On two different occasions, he had to pick up the pieces that were left behind by a coach who was beloved by the fan base and not miss a beat. Did it at North Dakota State. Craig Bowl gets the job at Wyoming. Everyone is excited for Craig Bowl. And then they turn to the next guy, Chris Kleiman, waiting there. Hopeful. Guess what? He was there for the championships. He was able to build something promising. So instead, he goes and says, okay, I like where we're at. I'm just going to go ahead and win four conference, I mean, four national championships at the FCS level before taking over at Kansas State for Bill Snyder. Well, not only am I going to do that, I'm going to post a record of 69 and six during my tenure at North Dakota State, get a first round quarterback sent to the next level in Carson Wentz, have a slew of players actually turn down group of five offers to come play here, and I'm going to build a dynasty. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to win a lot of games. And then he gets a job at Manhattan in place of Bill Snyder, one of the most beloved coaches of the early 2000s and late 90s. And he wins. And he wins a lot. And he's consistent at that. Eight wins every year except for the COVID season in 2020. He's also been to a conference championship game. He also is working the portal in his favor. He also is now keeping five-star talents in the state of Kansas. He also is building something to where this program is going to be viewed as a legit contender for flagship of the Big 12. 
He's doing all that. You know what that sounds a lot like? A coach by the name of Kyle Whittingham that had to do the exact same play thing in place of Urban Meyer. You know what that sounds like? A coach who was able to get the best version of his team to take the field and hold their own against quality competition, regardless of who they faced. Sound a little bit like Chris Kleiman? Yeah, it should. The guy is just good. There is a reason why I would say Kleiman is a top 10 coach in college football. Number one, the buy-in from players. You never hear anyone say a damn negative thing about Kleiman. Everyone has only positive surroundings with him. And so it becomes easier to sell a program that way. We often are willing to give players or people the benefit of the doubt for being an asshole when they've earned that right or when they've had a bad day. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but we don't hold on to people who are always mean and cold-hearted. Perfect example of this. Sam Pittman had the exact same record as Dana Holgerson. Both went four and eight this past year. Guess who kept a job and guess who got fired? You want to know why? Because you're allowed to have a bad day. You're not allowed to make every day a terrible one. And that was exactly what happened with Pittman. You never hear about a bad day with Chris Kleiman. All you hear about is the way that people gravitate towards what he is teaching. All you hear about is what people are saying that he can be moving forward. All you hear with Chris Kleiman is, I went to Manhattan. And I left a better person because of it. So you already cross off that big box. The second most important thing is it doesn't matter the competition. The only team that was able to dismantle TCU last season before the national championship was Kansas State. And they played down. That's the crazy part. They were losing at one point. Rally the troops. Find a way to fight together band and put together something of a Mi'kmaq and make sure that we are the most dominant team regardless of who takes the field. Yeah, we're going to do that. They did. They won the Big 12 title because of it just two years ago. Oh, and the quarterback that did it wasn't good enough to retain the starting job because Kleiman went out and he added in an even better option than Avery Johnson. Johnson is going to be a name that you should probably put a little bit of cash on just to maybe make it to New York City. He's that good of a player. Colin Klein was considered the greatest quarterback to reside in the Bill Snyder era. I think we're talking about the same thing in the climbing in the climbing era with Avery Johnson. He is that special of a kid. They've also added in some talent via the portal. A wide receiver, Dante Cephas is a name that you want to monitor right now. He certainly is going to be a player. And now you look at where the future of the Big 12 is. Kind of like the future was for the Pac-12 a little bit not too long ago where somebody had to kind of take over and run the show. Kleinman can do that. Kleinman absolutely can. In fact, if Sharon Moore wasn't already just a built name in the halls of Ann Arbor, the first phone call I would have made if I was Ward Manuel was to Chris Kleinman. Because if I know two things are going to happen, number one, my program is going to be better simply by having him on staff. And number two, he is not afraid to follow a legend. He is not afraid to pick up the pieces of somebody who is renowned for their work at a university and make it even better. He is not afraid to go up against the challenges of recruiting against top tier names and be able to come out on the other side with maybe not an elite roster, but a roster that will play like it is elite. There are not many coaches that can do that in college football. And it feels like every few years we go through this conversation where Dave Aranda, he's going to be considered underrated because of one great season. Lincoln Riley considered on the come up because of one great season. You look at, uh, uh, who was another name that was out there not too long ago? Mel Tucker. Mel Tucker is a perfect example of this where he has a great year in East Lansing. Transfer portal running rampant. They're excited. Everyone's elated about what's coming. And he is the next big name in college football. And now he's out of a job for a variety of reasons that we're not going to get into because I don't have the patience to deal with it. But Chris Kleinman, every year since coming into Manhattan, has had eight wins minus the 2020 season. He also has won a conference title, and he has had his team ranked on three different occasions. Oh, and by the way, when he was at North Dakota State, they were ranked outside the top two once. They went to four national titles. They won four. They went to a playoff and they finished in third in the semifinals. He is a coach in general, 111 and 37. He has had two top 25 rankings in the last 10 years. I mean, the last five years. He also is two and two in bowl games at the big, at the power five level. He's 25 and 19 in conference play. Oh, and he's won a conference title against an undefeated team. And he took Texas down to the wire this past year to force the game to go to overtime. If that's not underrated, I don't know what is. 
That, my friends, is the most underrated coach in college football. And more importantly, it is a coach you can hitch your wagon to to believe in moving forward. Results speak volume. There are so few coaches who are able to carry this type of weight the way that Kleiman is. But it's just another day at the office for him. You get a guy like that in the building, you hold on to him forever. And what Kansas State has is the guy who could end up being what we view Kyle Whittingham as, what we view Mike Gundy as, what we view coaches of the past that have always been stably sound, just never gotten the same recognition because they had to go up against Tom Osborne and they had to go up against Nick Saban. Just because you go up against the GOATs does not mean that you are not a great coach or a program definer. That's what you have in Chris Kleiman. And because of it, you're in a really good spot. I like what the Wildcats are building for their long term. I like the fact that they are going to be a team considered as a flagship. And make no mistake, they continue to do what they're doing and build with NIL and the transfer portal. They are going to be a team that can win national titles. They're a favorite to win the Big 12. And as long as you're a favorite in your conference, you're going to have a shot to make it to the CFP. I will not be shocked to watch as Chris Kleiman wins a playoff game, and now we start talking about him as a little bit more of a bigger name. If you don't already know him, better start learning it soon because of the underrated tag, that's going to depart in the not-so-distant future. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.